Good morning, my friends. Today I get quite the treat and I want to bring you guys along with it. So I had met with an herbalist over at a state park locally and she had showed us all of the great plants that are around in the area there and um, the medicinal qualities of those. Today she's coming to the property. So we're gonna walk around the property. She's gonna point out some of the great things that are here. She's gonna harvest some of the um, plants that we have here as well for her own medicinal um, tinctures and such. And uh, I will make sure I put a link down here so that you guys can go to her website as well. And we'll go through all those plants today and show you also how they can help you on your homestead. Okay, today I want to introduce you to Michelle. She has a local business and tell us a little bit about your business. Well, I am an herbalist out of Athol, Idaho, and I, um, I make different medicinal remedies out of the plants that grow all around us. So like skincare, um, teas, tinctures, all sorts of different remedies, but they're all made from plants that grow right here in the Inland Northwest. I'm so excited yeah. for that. I want to do something like that in the, in the awesome. future. Obviously, we're super busy right now, but yeah. down the road, maybe. Yeah, it's uh, it's been really, really fun. We didn't, it wasn't even meant to be a business. We started it during COVID, and I realized that I could not rely on the government or really anyone outside of my own family for my family's health, and so it got me looking in my yard, and I realized I live on a pharmacy and so I started making things for my family and it turned into something bigger than I ever expected. It's so amazing to see what like hey, God has created for us. Oh. And um, <laughs> yeah. learning all about this, my eyes have been open. I've been in the medical field for 30 years. Wow. And this is like, it's just so amazing mm -hmm. what what he provides. Yeah, yeah, we we have seen so many people. I mean, right now we're, I'm actually helping a girlfriend go through cancer oh. and um, it's amazing to watch her. The doctors have said, there's nothing else we can do. Um, and she's doing better, not being treated by doctors. And it's, it's like, gives me goosebumps. Praise God it's, for that. It's really cool. And my, my husband's been able to get off different medications with the help of plants. Oh, and so um, I mean, like we're watching like goal after goal begin to like come to fruition with learning how to use plants and learning how to use them to support our bodies. And working with local plants, definitely there is something extra powerful about that amen yeah well i so appreciate you coming yeah. so let's go get at awesome it. let's, let's do it forage well this may look like the spawn of satan but it's really not it's called a hawthorn and it's hawthorn is really easy to um identify because it has thorns and so um hawthorn is a fantastic plant for heart it is um great for sleep as well and it's safe for all ages. So the parts that you would use is not this dead looking bark, but you would want to use the flowers and the berries. Hawthorn berry is a really popular medicinal berry. You can even find it at lots of health food stores, or you can just find your own hawthorn tree and harvest them. So you'll get hawthorn berries. There's actually hawthorn berries growing right now in the summertime, um, but some trees will give you two, two berries per year. Um, but you can either get blackberries or red berries and they're all medicinal and they all help with especially with heart so if you have any kind of heart issues um, this would be a good thing to look into and see if it'd be a good fit for you so usually in these shady areas finding medicinal plants can be hit or miss because so many plants like sunshine but at some point i'm sure on this hike we're going to find elderberries because elderberries love just those little patches of sun and you'll see like just like shaded areas and then all of a sudden this glorious elderberry will be coming out because they love sunshine and they will show up where there is sunshine um but i'm seeing a lot of other stuff right now like some solomon seal and a lot of other things that probably will make you sick so <laughs> <laughs> well let's pray for finding an elderberry bush. yes yes good job gunner Damn. you want to you want to talk about it okay <laughs> Yeah, so let me. So, my 
awesome 11 year old budding herbalist over there fiery redhead gunner found this the nickname is old man's beard and you've probably seen it growing like all over the forest but this is actually called usnia it's a lichen so it's like halfway between a plant and a mushroom and it grows on conifers and this stuff is natural antibiotic so this and these guys here this white i can never remember the name of this one but this is natural doxycycline which is a really potent very very effective antibiotic and so the way that i like to use i work with usnea mostly just because that's what i have growing all around me and i will add it to a tea if someone has like a urinary tract infection <laughs> or um if someone has a high fever that seems like it could be caused by something bacterial then we'll use this um, but this is a fantastic thing to have in your arsenal also one cool thing about usnea is it is antifungal so if you find a big old bunch of it and you are out hiking and someone gets a really really gnarly wound you can actually use this to pack a wound and since it's antifungal you don't have to worry about infection so this is a total like life-saving plant right here especially out in the wilderness so this stuff is still pretty good it's definitely not past its prime it's getting close though you really want your usnea a little bit stretchy and this still has a little bit of stretch so i would totally harvest this and use it and just save it i just save mine in a mason jar for a rainy sick day and then use it but you just want to um you want to make sure that it's not just crusty and looking dead this stuff is still looking pretty good so yeah and it pretty much tastes like nothing and it does it tastes like nothing which is great because most herbs are terrible taste like dirt so yeah that's a nice thing so this one here this is if you've ever watched the show alone and you've seen them eating the red berries they call them sometimes they call them bearberry or knick this is it but um its latin name is uva ursi and the main thing that this is used for is anything kidney reproductive area related this is the ultimate herb for UTIs. Really, really cool. It's especially used in Europe by physicians um, for treating urinary conditions and kidney conditions. It's used all over the world and this is like the treatment. So I love having this one. It's also used worldwide for like really fancy skincare. So if you wanna have like fancy rich people skin just Grab some of these and infuse it in oil and woo, there you go. So yeah, there are some really cool things you can do with this stuff. But Uva Ursi, Bearberry, Knick Knick, it's got lots of names and it's a wonderful plant to have and it's pretty, so yeah. <laughs> Dude, I love your shirt. <laughs> I found it at um, the Beaumont $10 bag sale that they do a couple times a year for charity. I always find the best stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. All together out here, I would say when the snow hits, basically. Well, no, not really. It's actually all year round. So for like elderberries, it's early, mid fall, and then come rose hips once once it um once we get our first good frost, then the rose hips are good. Ashberries are once you get a really good hard freeze. And those are great for um, regulating blood sugar. Um, but then after that, pine trees and fir trees particularly, once the snow hits, that's when they're medicinally the most available nice. and the medicine in them actually like comes out. Oh, okay. And so foraging really can be year round. It's just amazing. So I've done that a lot throughout the winter. Like somebody's not feeling well, traipsing out in the snow to get some fir needles. It doesn't really ever have to stop. It just gets less and less. 
is a rose hip. Rose yeah. hip. The problem I found is I wait, was trying to wait for the frost, uh -huh. but the animals ate them. Yeah, that's the trick for sure. So I did not get any. <laughs> and you can't harvest those early. You can, okay. and you can just put them in the freezer. They don't taste as great as when you let them go on their own, but you can trick them and put them in the freezer and they still work pretty darn good. Okay, yeah. We have a black hawthorn here. That's cool. Do they have different medicinal properties? Not that I know of. As far as all the research I've done, they're the same. known as the time clock of summer. So when summer hits, they, all of the little purple sticks are covered in blooms. And as summer comes to a close, the blooms fall. And since there's only blooms on the very top, it tells you that summer is pretty close to done. Um, people use fireweed for all sorts of different things. A lot of people will make jams and jellies and syrups with the, um, the blooms. Um, I prefer to just use the leaves. I make a fermented tea with the leaves. That's fantastic for your gut especially, but really your whole body. Um, but the leaves are especially good for a, a gut tonic for healing the digestive tract. So that's what I use it for. Do you think it would work good for acid reflux? I think it wouldn't hurt. I don't know if it would necessarily change it, but it really, it's one of those plants that kind of has a way to help every function of the body nice. so it probably would and since most people make it and ferment it you've got that other uh, you've got the fermentation in there too so it would it definitely wouldn't hurt so right like directly in front of us but that has like the big like the dead looking one coming up those two trees there mm -hmm. are that's on my side i don't think it is you find a treasure. Oh. Okay, so we got our bouquets. <laughs> I got this. We got the basket. So it was a great day foraging. Mm -hmm. We're done with our hike for today. I greatly appreciate you coming out and pointing out all the, the cool plants around us. Yeah, man, that was super fun. I love it. And really an answer to prayer for me too, because a lot of the plants are dying and you guys are in just a really cool little environment where you've still got a lot growing. And I needed to stock up yeah. on a few more things and I got to, so that was awesome. And it's great for you guys as well, because then you can kind of see a little bit more of the, the stuff around you, especially if you're in this area here in North Idaho, or even throughout the United States, some of these plants are prolific there as well. So mm -hmm. yeah. go look in your backyard. Absolutely. And talk to your friends because if you don't have it, someone that you know probably does. And as a community, we'll be able to help each other. And that's what happened today. And that's what we love. Community mm -hmm. is so important. Yep, totally. You guys, God bless.